the Big Y DNA test. How to match the breadcrumb code to your ancestor and how to understand the Big Y test results. The Big Y test is available at ftdna.com. It's for males only as they have the Y DNA. This test will give you evidence of your ancestry and tie you into the human tree, clear back to the beginning of time and your father's 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 side. Once you or male tester for your father's side has taken a big Y test, you will be able to log into this page on ftdna.com. Click on block tree to continue. The first thing you want to notice are the columns. The highlighted column in an aqua arrow and the highlighted column in a bright pink arrow both represent cousin matches that I have and the cousin matches are blanked out for their privacy's sake. Choose the branch that says your branch at the bottom. In this case, it's highlighted with aqua arrows. Look above the aqua arrow all the way to where it says private variants, and then up above that where it has four breadcrumbs that start with uh, the code RFT146901. That means it is the haplogroup name for our most recent common ancestor. It's called a breadcrumb and it represents Henry Cote, who we know is our most recent common ancestor through historical documentation. Now look at the column highlighted with a bright pink arrow. That column goes up and shows that the first place we match is RFT147933. That represents a, an ancestor that is, according to the left-hand column, almost 15 snips or variations back in time. Note that each box on the left, the small gray boxes, with the yellow arrows pointing to them, represent a change or a variation in the DNA from the previous um, generations. It usually represents three generations between each um, change, all the way up the side. So it's a timeline of sorts. In summary, the pink column matches us to a cousin where our first common ancestor is 14 snips back and the aqua column matches a cousin who our common ancestor we know is Henry Cote and he's approximately seven generations, or excuse me, seven variations back in time. Here is a summary of what you just learned. Each light gray rectangle on the left-hand side represents one SMP or variation. And that occurs about every 83 years or three generations in the male line. The column above your branch shows a white box that is the variations you have in common with a cousin. It's the top number in each box that represents a breadcrumb or code that is the common ancestor for each cousin match to you. Use the top number in each box. It's important to note that the breadcrumb name or code can change over time as more cousin matches come up with additional variations. Each box's breadcrumb numbers are not in any order, as that is uncertain. If a variation has its own box, then its order is known. Notice how I've added the big Y breadcrumb for Henry Coat to my family tree. That might change over time, but it's important because 
as I get matches, I can make sure that I've traced the line correctly or reconfigure it when a breadcrumb tells me something different than that. This is a more accurate version of a timeline that FTDNA now provides for um, big Y testers. Where the aqua arrow is, it shows that my closest ancestor to the first cousin towards the bottom is approximately around 17 to 1750, and it turns out they're in the 1700s. All of the cousins I currently have that have taken the big Y test branch off clear back in the year 1750 BCE, which is before Common Era. That's quite a ways back. This is the furthest my male testers breadcrumbs go. APR2921 is his haplogroup or name. He is our ancestor from about the year 232,000 BCE, before Common Era. He is called the male Adam. You can follow your own breadcrumbs back by clicking the top arrow on your block tree if you get a big Y test. You'll learn all about famous people that you're related to way back in history that have come off the same branches as you. I find their reports fascinating. Thank you for listening. I sure hope this helped.